whenever you are ready. I am ready. Good morning. My name is Katie Moll. With my AP research project, I chose to study the correlation between AIG and teen anxiety. My initial interest in this subject was struck when I began dealing with anxiety in high school. I just wanted to know why. I began to wonder if it had any correlation <coughs> to my younger life and my early introduction to academic stress. This led me to wonder, are students who are, more, or who are subject to more academic stress more likely to develop anxiety? This then led me to think about where academic stress originates. I came to the conclusion that my own academic stress originated when I was identified as AIG in elementary school. By researching on several scholarly sites, I came upon an article published in the New York Times that was titled, Why Are More Students Than Ever Suffering From Severe Anxiety? and was written by Denzi Lewis. This article focused on the life of a North Carolina teen named Jake and his development of severe anxiety. The author concluded that his development could be traced back to his academic stress. This conclusion sparked further interest into my topic. I decided to explore the situations of other students in my area to test this hypothesis and address the gap in the Randolph County school system. After identifying this gap, I was able to formulate my research question. Is there a correlation between students who are identified as academically gifted in elementary school and the development of anxiety disorders in Southwestern Randolph High School seniors? To be able to fully understand this research project, it is important to define some specific terms. First, what is AIG? AIG stands for Academically or Intellectually Gifted. AIG students are identified in North Carolina in elementary school through a testing process that is typically administered in third grade. The North Carolina Department of Instruction, or the NCDPI, defines AIG students as students who perform or show the potential to form at substantially high levels of accomplishment when compared with others of their age, experiences, or environment. The NCDPI also states that academically or intellectually gifted students require differentiated educational services beyond those ordinarily provided by a regular educational program. AIG students are identified by local education agencies, or LEAs, across the state. Each LEA has administrative control and direction over public elementary school activities. These identification processes determine if a student has the potential and what actions need to be taken to satisfy the academic needs of that student. These processes can be the first steps into the development of academic stress in students. According to the Department of Behavioral Sciences at USCI, academic stress is the most common emotional or mental state that students experience during their studies. Academic stress can lead to declines in mental health, which is a human's emotional, psychological, and social well-being, and can affect how we think, feel, and handle stress. A decline in mental health can lead to the development of mental health disorders, including anxiety, which is defined as a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically accompanied by compulsive behavior and panic attacks. Anxiety becomes severe when it is endured continuously resulting in high amounts of adrenaline in the blood, which can lead to high blood pressure and breathing issues. Large amounts of academic stress may correlate directly with the development of severe forms of anxiety. My research process followed a pathway of hypothesis to interviews to results to analysis. My initial hypothesis was, if a student is identified as AIG in elementary school, then they are more likely to develop an anxiety disorder in their teenage years. After I was able to formulate a formal hypothesis, I then transitioned to deciding on a method. While studying methods, I first had to decide which mode of methodology I wanted to utilize. I originally wanted to conduct several surveys to get a widespread idea of the county high school population as a whole, so I could tackle qualitative and quantitative statistics. This, this survey I, that I began creating contained questions such as, do you know if you were identified as AIG in elementary school? What grades do you strive for in your classes? To your knowledge, do you experience anxiety? Have you ever experienced stress caused by school and school-related activities? And have you ever been medically diagnosed with an anxiety disorder? I then sent this specific survey to the County Review Board, and after much communication and consideration, it was decided that a survey regarding this type of material would be in violation of HIPAA laws. In an effort to keep all of my participants safe and confidential, we decided to change to an interview process. I transitioned to this interview style of research, and although I was aware I would not be able to obtain as many answers, I was able to get inter intimate responses that would aid in the formulation of my own research. Through this interview process, I was able to continue with this mixed method approach because I got answers that were descriptive and detailed, but were able to be compared in a quantitative format. The interview process provided the research with qualitative information that was utilized as a reference point for my initial hypothesis. The responses of the interviews were then compared to one another in a qualitative form or in a quantitative format regarding the correlation of AIG identification and the development of anxiety. The participants of this study 
were selected based on their relevance and willingness to to based on their relevance and willingness to engage in the inquiry process. The initial target of this research was all students of Randolph County High Schools. However, due to circumstances, it was narrowed to seniors at Southwest and Randolph High School. The interviews were not solely conducted on students that were identified as AIG for the proof of correlation and the purpose of comparison. Several individuals were, were invited to participate and provided with the parameters of this research process. The research aspired to gain a wide understanding of students affected by the implementation of AIG programs, and the process was successful as it did gain responses from eight participants, although it was not as many as I would have hoped for through the survey type of research. The participants were asked 19 questions regarding their involvement or lack thereof in the AIG program, as well as their struggles with academic stress and mental health disorders. Each recipient was a senior at Southwest Serena High School. In hopes of keeping the research process anonymous and free of bias, each recipient was given an ID. The IDs followed the path of IID and a number to separate participants. For example, interviewee number one was given the ID of IID1. Due to the fact that the inquiry process was conducted by in-depth interviews, the researchers allowed to gain an intimate understanding of the participants' experiences. The, ele the elementary schools in Randolph County were that the participants attended were identified. Five attended Farmer Elementary School and the other three attended South Elementary School. Both of these are feeder elementary schools for Southwest and Randolph High School, so the participants geographically followed the NCDPI and LEA pathway of schools. After these elementary schools were identified and reported, the research process narrowed to identify the students that were involved in AIG programs. Five out of the eight participants that were involved in the AIG program, and three were not. However, it is important to know one particular response. IID number three stated that they were identified as AIG, but did not participate in the program because they chose to hide the papers to be an AIG from their parents. After further questioning, it was revealed that this student did not believe they were smart enough to do something like that and did not want to do the extra work that's associated with AIG programs. Because the student did not participate in the AIG classes, they were categorized into 37.5%, but it was after questioning it was revealed that they just didn't want to do it due to the underlying stigma that exists regarding high-level elementary school. Four of the five students that were identified as AIG attended Farm Elementary School, while the other one attended Southmont. Because these two elementary schools are in the same LEA, it is safe to assume that their AIG programs were similar, if not identical. Some follow-up questions were then asked specifically to the students that participated in the AIG program. First, what do you remember about your involvement in the AIG or similar program? IID number one stated that they remember feeling like it was a waste of time. The goal of the program was to challenge us, but I feel like I would have been better off in my core classes learning the curriculum from the state. Contrarily, IID2 responded to the positives of the program, saying, I remember it being challenging. I had never truly been challenged before, and being subject to tougher work made me question my intelligence. I remember being able to learn better with the small, interactive group of students that the AIG program provided, and I appreciated that. Another follow-up question was asked, how do you think that your involvement in these programs had an impact on your academic growth? IID number eight stated, I feel that in the short term of elementary school, it stunned my academic growth, but then in middle and on into high school, it boosted my academic growth. IID number two responded to the question with, I believe that it allowed for me to realize the type of potential I had as a student, but also added to my stress levels as I always strive for perfection and to fall short. The interview questions then transitioned to identify or to focus on the mental health aspect of teenagers as the participants were asked to describe their struggles with academic stress. IID number one stated, I definitely had a lot of academic stress and anxiety. It came from the pressure of getting straight A's in AP classes and getting into a good college. Even as far back as elementary school, I remember being told that you had to get perfect grades and do tons of things to get into a good college. IID number two stated, I struggle with academic stress and I believe that it originates from my early school years. I always strived to be the best and when I would fall short, I would feel like I failed myself and the expectations of people around me. It has stayed with me through all of my years in school and has only grown worse. Similarly, I, similarly, IID6 stated that their academic stress levels are terrible. It had become so bad at points that I now have to wear a night guard because I grind my teeth, especially when my assignments are test due. There are times that I feel like my chest is closing. I would work myself up so much that I would have to cry myself to sleep. Now I have the issue of not being able to stay asleep the entire night. The remaining responses were synonymous with the three previously incorporated. Every individual, whether they're identified as academically gifted or not, struggles with some sort of academic stress. The participants were then asked if they had been formally diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Two had not been diagnosed, three had been medically diagnosed, and three had been self-diagnosed with anxiety and or anxiety-like tendencies. 
Analyzing these commonalities as well as the differences between the interview answers allow for the inquiry hypothesis to be stabilized. This chart shows a comparison between the identification and the anxiety development. The pink bars represent the participants, both AIG and not, and the purple bars underneath them represent the percentage of those students that have anxiety. Out of the five students that were identified as AIG, two were medically diagnosed with anxiety and the other three were self-diagnosed with anxiety and or anxiety-like tendencies. Only one out of the three students that were not identified as AIG was medically diagnosed with anxiety, but they do, but they do credit academic and life stress as the root of their medical anxiety. These findings show counter-research that was conducted as a way to further prove the initial hypothesis. Due to these conclusions, an assumption can be made to solidify the correlation between identification and the development of severe forms of anxiety. A plausible conclusion is shown here as a pathway to anxiety diagnosis. It begins with AIG identification typically in the third grade, which then leads to academic competition and stress for students, which can lead to unrealistic expectations of the student, the student's work, and the student's peers, which then leads to uncontrollable feelings of anxiety for the student and eventually an anxiety diagnosis. It is important to note that the development of anxiety, especially severe anxiety, can be the result of multiple life stressors, as well as genetics. There was an apparent correlation between the recipients who were identified as AIG and those who were diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. The number of recipients did prove to be an issue and a limitation with the findings. If the research process were to be replicated, I believe that a larger number of interviews would need to be conducted that included students from all four feeder elementary schools for Southwestern Randolph High School. I also believe that it will be important to decipher other possible causes of anxiety in these students, such as gender and genetics. Also, having students who are aware of their likelihood to develop such anxiety disorders would be important to the success of a replicated study. This research process and study aim to spread awareness of the growing development of anxiety disorders. The study also hoped to make elementary schools and the North Carolina Department of Instruction aware of their involvement in the declining mental health of students. The North Carolina Department of Instruction and our specific LEA should be held accountable for their impact on students and revise curricula to simultaneously challenge students while aiding in their healthy mental development. In conclusion, there is a correlation between AIG identification and the increasing diagnosis of anxiety disorders. Several limitations were implemented in this research process. Due to this, the responses may not have been as widespread as I had hoped for. In future research, more interviews will need to be conducted to solidify the hypothesis. These interviews need to be distributed to more students, as well as authoritative figures in elementary schools, such as principals and AIG instructors. Also, further research would hope to question officials at the North Carolina Department of Instruction and our leaders in our specific LEA. The interviews of these officials, paired with the guidance from mental health officials, would deepen the total understanding of the correlation between academically gifted students and anxiety. Thank you. All right, Thanks, good. <clears throat> All right, Kate. How did your initial exploration of the scholarly conversation lead to your final research question? When I first started looking through um, scholarly sites to kind of find the gap in what I wanted to research, I did come across the one specific article that I mentioned in my presentation about why are more American teenagers than ever suffering from severe anxiety. And when I read that, it was done in an interview format sort of way um, with the author diving into the North Carolina teen's life and that kind of formed how I wanted to do mine. And even though I didn't know I would be doing an interview, I did want to um, be able to pull from that once I found my interview process. And then being able to see that there was a correlation between Jake's life and his academic stress and his anxiety proved to me that there probably is correlations within our uh, small area. How does your new understanding address the gap in the scholarly conversation? So like I said, when I was looking through the um, scholarly conversation and seeing what was there, there was a lot of articles about AIG students and gifted students, and there were a lot of articles about teen anxiety, but I never came across one that was about how AIG and teen anxiety really connects. The only one I found was the one about how um, you know the North Carolina teen had academic stress that led to his anxiety. So I figured that I know I have both of these, and I have lots of um, literary devices that can um, back up my findings but there wasn't ever anything that led to the connections. So that's what I wanted to address with my gap. Think back to the initial curiosity that sparked your inquiry. What other curiosities do you have and how has this process prepared you to explore them? So my initial curiosity with this was my own personal life. And so 
Another thing that I would like to study, especially in this field, would be to see what would happen to these students in the next four years. Because right now, these students, and they have been since they were eight years old, are in the top tier of their academic class and are in you know, overachievers and high achievers. And next year, most of us are going off to college where we will not be top tier, we will be average. So I think it would be interesting to see like in the next four years if our anxiety grows worse or maybe if it gets better because that stress of being the best and always expectation might be lifted off of us because we are on an equal plane. All right, great job.